Heats of reaction are important to know how much heat is going to be given off for an exothermic reaction or how much heat is required for an endothermic reaction. Uh, we're going to talk about heats of reaction, just first of all define them. This is our uh, heat of reaction, uh, units of uh, you know, energy per mole or per, uh, you know, in this case, pound mole, uh, mole or mole, and then kilojoules, BTUs, or calories. Okay, so um, energy per mole is typical. And uh, if it's, if it's going to be less than zero, okay, heat of reaction is negative, then we say that it's exothermic. So it uh, gave off heat or uh, produced heat because of the reaction. But if heat of reaction is greater than zero, then we're going to say that it's endothermic or it needs heat. Okay, so um, we have this um, heat of reaction not, uh, or the standard heat of reaction. Okay, and that's going to be, for example, at 25 degrees Celsius. Um, we always uh, define the heat of reaction is defined by the complete reaction. Okay, so uh, we say that uh, it, it goes to completion, um, and that is the, the uh, kilojoules per mole uh, reacted. Okay, so it's uh, heat absorbed or given off per mole reacted. Um, we say heat absorbed because we define it as positive for endothermic reactions. Okay, so just remember that um, we defined the XC, um, and uh, that was NA out equals um, NA in uh, plus, and then our XC times the stoichiometric coefficient. Okay, so just rearranging that and solving for C, this is what it uh, gives us here. But this quantity in the numerator is also the number of uh, moles reacted. Okay, so that helps us uh, define the, um, the C in just different terms. So therefore, the, the heat, uh, the delta H, the enthalpy of our system um, is, is going to be the uh, C or the extent of reaction times, um, you know, multiplied by this heat of reaction. Okay, so when we say standard, okay, heat of, heat of formation, the uh, heat is required, that's required to form the species at one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius, and uh, we have a table for those. So for um, a number of compounds, either vapor or liquid, we can look those up. Um, and then it also assumes all reactants and products are at 25 uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, so we just can sum those up. Your different species multiplied by the stoichi stoichiometric uh, coefficient, and that will also equal our delta H of reaction. Okay, so we can we can get this from two places. We can either look up uh, the heat of reaction in a table, or we can compute it from the uh, heats of formation. And just remember that negative signs are for reactants. Uh, for these stoichiometric coefficients. And so it's, it's kind of like products minus uh, reactants. Okay, so let's just look at an example, gasification of carbon. Okay, so here's a carbon solid. Um, we add water, you know, steam in this case, um, to produce uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Okay, so um, here we have our different species with the stoichiometric coefficients. These are going to be negative because they're reactants. Um, and then we look at the, the heat of formation uh, in kilojoules per mole for each of those. Now, now these are zero because those, um, those are defined as zero for you know, carbon, um, you know, hydrogen, uh, nitrogen, um, and oxygen. Okay, those are going to be defined as zero at, uh, at 25 uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, um, so let's just go ahead and do uh, the math here. We multiply, um, here is a product, okay? And then we had another product right here, minus um, you know, this negative one times um, this 241.83, and then minus zero as well. So here's our heat of reaction for this, okay? so. That means that this is going to be endothermic, so it's going to require heat in order to proceed 
uh, with the reaction or the temperature is going to cool down. Okay, so um, let's just look at this uh, in terms of path independent. So uh, the heat of reaction for this reaction is 393.51 kilojoules per mole. But let's say we broke it down into elemental uh, reactions. So we have the carbon, first of all, it takes half of one of these diatomic oxygens to produce uh, carbon dioxide. And then this same carbon dioxide has another um, oxygen atom that's added to produce uh, carbon dioxide. And if we look at the heats of reaction of both of these, okay, so that's how much uh, they're endothermic, each step is endothermic, but this second step produces you know, almost three times as much energy as the first. But if we add those up, uh, we get the same answer that we did up here. Okay, so you can break it down into steps. This really comes from Hess's law. You can add or subtract reactions uh, to get the delta H of reaction. Okay, so um, let's just look at the heat of combustion as well. Often these are reported at one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. Um, you know, we have a table in the back of our book. It's the second to last column. These heats of combustion are reported. Um, and then it just assumes that all reactants and products are also at 25 degrees Celsius, okay, which is probably not going to be the case for many um, you know, combustion reactions. But nevertheless, that's how they're reported. Okay, and so um, also one thing to note, um, all the hydrogen is gonna go to water. And if, we, if it goes to liquid water, then we call that the, uh, for the heat of combustion, call it the, the higher or the high heating value. <clears throat> if we say it goes to vapor, then we call that the low heating value. Okay, so you can extract more energy out of a system if the water condenses uh, versus if it doesn't. Okay, so high versus low heating value. Okay, so um, this is the, uh, the heating value is also the negative of the delta H of combustion. Let's just go ahead and do an example. We have, uh, here we have ammonia um, plus uh, NH3 plus O2 is gonna go to 3 halves H2O liquid plus a half nitrogen. So let's just look up the heats of formation of all of these. Now these are gonna be um, zero. They're just, uh, how, how you define zero for the heat of formation. Um, and then, but these are gonna be non-zero Okay, so we do the uh, products minus reactants. Okay, so we look at the stoichiometric coefficients here, three halves, and then this was gonna be zero anyway, so we don't worry about the half. Then we do minus, um, because this is a, a reactant, okay, minus 46.19. There is our uh, heat of reaction. Okay, and this is the same as the delta H of combustion in table B1. Okay, so um, how do you find heat of reaction at a different temperature if it's different than, than 25 degrees uh, Celsius? So we can use one of two methods. We can use a path method or we can use the heat of formation. So um, if we use the path method, let's say we're starting at a temperature, let's say 2000 um, degrees Celsius, for example, well, maybe not that hot, um, yeah, maybe a thousand um, degrees Celsius, and then we're going to cool down to uh, uh, 25. Um, that's where we have our heat of reaction, and then we um, get our products B, and then we have to heat those back up to a thousand degrees, for example. Okay, um, so that's one way to do it because we only have the heat of reaction here, but we want to compute the heat of reaction at a certain temperature instead. Okay, so what we have to do is, um, let's see, let me just uh, make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so here we have the, the delta H. Um, so this is, uh, this is going to be the, uh, how much heat it takes to uh, cool it down to 25 degrees. So we integrate from temperature, maybe our 1,000 degrees to 25. And then we have our heat capacity of A um, times dt. Now if this is constant, um, uh, then it can just uh, be C to P uh, times delta T. 
but um, we're going to say it's, it's not going to be constant. It's going to be this polynomial function here, dependence on temperature. Then we have our heat of reaction at 25 degrees. That's how we go across. And then we go from 25 degrees to, to T, to the final T. Now, now another way to write this is just to combine this term and this term. Um, and what we're going to do is just switch the limits of integration, T to 25, um, and then put a negative here. Okay, so um, that's where this negative CPA comes from. So we have the same limits of integration. We just combine these two, C sub B, B minus C sub A. So it's really the difference in heat capacities that causes um, us to get a different uh, delta H uh, a total. Okay, so um, this is going to be delta uh, C sub P. Um, and uh, if we have a polynomial function, then this, these A primes and B primes are just the stoichiometric coefficients times the original A and B and C and D. Um, and then we can compute the delta C, uh, uh, C sub P, okay, the delta heat capacity. Okay, so let's just say we uh, plug this in then. We have, um, there's our heat of reaction at 25 degrees here is all of this right here is going to be this uh, delta uh, CP that's integrated okay so when we integrate it we get um, you know the a prime T plus B prime T squared over 2 okay plus uh, C prime T cubed over 3 plus D prime T to the fourth over 4 and then limits of integration so we're just going to go from uh, 25 uh, to T. Okay, so we've just plugged those in uh, here for our different T values. And then this gives us the contribution of integrating uh, this difference right here. Okay, so that's the first way to do it. That's the path method. A second method is just to start with the heats of formation. Okay, so we look at the heats of formation of, of our B. Okay, this is our out and then minus um, heats of formation of A. So we just have to compute the heats of formation. Don't forget that those are often reported at 25 degrees Celsius. So we just have to have to use the same thing to go from 25 to, uh, to you know, 1000, for example, in this case. Okay, so um, that's how we would do it with, um, with heats of formation. Okay, so two different ways. Um, you know, here we have an example, carbon monoxide and, uh, and oxygen goes to CO2. And so we want to find the heat of reaction at 1200 um, degrees Celsius. So let's do both approaches. Let's use the delta heat capacity approach, that's the path method. And then let's also use the heat of formation approach, um, H out minus H in from the heat of formation. Okay, so what we want to do is just uh, we're going to go take a look at the spreadsheet right now. Just a spreadsheet uh, for this example problem where we've done this calculation with carbon monoxide and oxygen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. Let's go down to this example Excel file. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and open this and let me make it just a little bit smaller so we can see um, see the whole thing. Okay, so I have um, right here, this is my delta H of combustion. Okay, so I just looked that up, 282.99 at 25 uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's, um, that's what it is at, at 25. But what we want to do is calculate uh, what it's going to be at 1200 instead. Okay, so is it going to be more or less? than uh, exothermic. Okay, so if it gets a more negative number, it's going to be more exothermic. Or if it gets uh, closer to zero, it's going to be less exothermic. Okay, so here are the heat capacities, CO, O2, and CO2. And there are your A, B, C, and D coefficients. So that's just a third order polynomial. Those are the coefficients of the polynomial. And then our temperatures in uh, Celsius, there's the form. Um, there's the delta H of formation and also the stoichiometric uh, coefficient. So this is just uh, information from the tables for those uh, gas species. Okay, so we're going to uh, use this delta CP um, and then integrate it. Okay, so we'll just plug it into uh, this equation. Okay, and 
when I look at this, okay, so I've just, um, there's my A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, um, and I've plugged it into uh, this equation, and that gave me a delta H of, of reaction is negative 280.58 kilojoules per gram mole. Okay, so, um, you know, this uh, this makes sense because an exothermic, uh, let's see, so um, we have a lower, um, okay, so lower amount of heat that is given off at higher temperatures. Okay, so if we have 1200 uh, degrees Celsius versus 25, we get about um, two, uh, let's see if that's um, about two and a half less kilojoules per gram mole um, less of, uh, let's see, is that one and a half? Okay, so that is, uh, that is gonna be two and a half uh, kilojoules per gram mole less energy. Okay, so not a lot less, maybe 1% less for energy that's given off. Okay, um, and then let's just look at this alternate approach. So this is from heats of formation. Okay, so um, this is heat of formation at 1200. We saw up here, that was at 25, but um, to get 1200, we also had to do this, add in the heat capacity uh, and go from 25 up to 1200. Okay, so that also used these A, B, C, uh, coefficients and so I just computed delta H of formation plus the integral from T ref to T of C sub P dt. Okay, and then I did that for O2 um, and uh, CO2 as well. Okay, and there are my heats of formation at 1200 uh, degrees C, and then of course all I have to do is add up the stoichiometric coefficients. Okay, so oxygen is the only uh, funny one, but that one uh, has a, also has a very low uh, magnitude relative to like CO2, for example. Okay, so that gives me um, exactly uh, the same answer that I had before. So let's just compute um, the difference uh, between those two. Okay, so 2.41 uh, less. Um, so just a little bit less, but we saw that we got the same answer, you know, here as um, you know down here. So um, we can do this either through uh, heats of formation or we can do it through the uh, path method. So let's just go back and um, and review what uh, we saw today. Okay, so. Just a few slides here. We talked about just a couple definitions. Um, you know, uh, heats of reaction. Okay, so uh, from heat of formation, we also talked about the path method. Okay, so so path independent, we can do individual reactions or overall reactions. Okay, and then uh, talked about heats of uh, combustion. Um, and then two methods to find it, um, again, this path method and then the heat of formation uh, method as well to find a, a heat of reaction. Okay, so it doesn't have to be necessarily at 25 degrees Celsius, it can be at other temperatures. Okay, well that concludes um, this, uh, this tutorial um, that we covered on heats of reaction.